Now, Pavarotti was a good friend. Hello. Welcome to The Revealing. I'm your host, Pavarotti. And I'm here to discuss the Idaho 4 case. As a disclaimer, this channel's for entertainment purposes. These are my opinions. And I'm not here to slander anyone. So let's get started. You know, folks, in today's episode, we're going to dive back into who actually committed this atrocity. It wasn't Brian Koberger. And before I do that, though, I've, I've got to address one issue. You know, it, it seems like the more work I put into this thing, the more animosity comes my way. I'm not sure where that animosity is really coming from. But when I got into this, I mean, I, I've watched, I don't know how many hours of other YouTube content creators um, producing their content, having discussions, and I, I think it's wonderful. I think all of their content is wonderful. In fact, a lot of the creators out there, when you, when you refer to this uh, true crime community, I mean, their main objective is to just have discussions. I mean, I've, I've seen many channels that that's what they do. They just get on there and they talk and talk and they enjoy it and they bring things to light. And I think it's good for, you know, good for society. Me, on the other hand, I've never, I mean, I've never wanted to be, um, you know, involved in any of that because that's just not what I do. I, I live a busy life and I could spend my, my time and efforts elsewhere versus just, you know, having discussions. So when I got into this, it was because I was serious about wanting to shed a light on what's really going on. And then the more I got into it, the more I realized the light that was being shed was not even the right light. That something else completely different happened in this case. And so I dug deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper until I started to uncover some real things. And... I'm not sure how other people have blinders on and spend more time trying to justify, you know, the evidence that I've uncovered as not being correct than, you know, putting time and effort into uncovering their own things. But, that, you know, that's just the way this thing rolls. So, in this episode, though, now I'm going to open some eyes. We're back into that investigation into who really committed the atrocity on King Road. And folks, I've been holding off for a while. I've had a lot of information on this case. But I wanted to go in a different direction there until we got past these this change of venue hearing. And now I'm going to go right back into the other direction, which is the investigation into this case. And I would recommend watching this video to the very end because I'm going to open your eyes on some things in this case. And I hope I don't hurt other people's feelings when I do, because when you attack my credibility in my investigation, and then I show you facts, you, you probably aren't going to you probably aren't going to feel as good about your, your your opinions there. But let's get into it, because there's certain facts in this case that we cannot we cannot deny. I mean, there's limited information out there for us to be able to investigate but there's some information that's out there for everybody to see and just for some reason we look at it in the wrong way and we come to the wrong conclusions so let's revisit some of that evidence that's out there and let's talk about how it actually fits into this case shall we now i can't be the only one who thinks it's odd that on october 21st 2022 a hardened criminal is released from the Lake Tahoe County Jail on a furlough to visit a sick relative and doesn't return after going to his house and becomes a fugitive of justice. And he's not arrested again until November 22nd, 2022 in Spokane, Washington.
then you have somebody actually see somebody who has the exact same name as this individual walking around prowling around the neighborhood of the atrocity just a couple of hours prior to the atrocity actually happening now this is only 45 minutes prior to the atrocity about an hour and 45 minutes after somebody seen the prowler and called him out by name so we can easily assume this is that same prowler and he is now heading towards the King Road residence at the proper time that somebody involved in this would be heading towards the King Road residence and I want you to notice his hat his jacket his pants and his shoes as he smokes that cigarette and am I the only one who notices just 30 minutes after the atrocity that a gentleman appears to the right of your screen smoking that same cigarette with the same walk looks like the same hat but now has on different shoes he has on white tennis shoes he has on looks like khaki colored pants in a different jacket but the same hat stands the same way smoking the same cigarette and now he is contacting his ride to come and get him he's just changed his clothes for some reason and then the person that he's contacting to pick him up you'll notice here in just a minute is going to drive up and pick him up and then we have to take a close look at the vehicle that is used to pick him up because it will tell another story that I think we all should pick up on. Now watch this vehicle as it turns sideways. Color is going to be hard to figure out although it looks to me like that could absolutely be red but what kind of vehicle is this it's a hatchback huh what is this vehicle now here is google maps during the time of the atrocity showing this vehicle parked right in front of that same assailant's house looks pretty similar to me how about you now we got to look at this vehicle that we all know was captured at that same trash can about midnight a few hours before we seen the prowler walking around and jeff h did a great video where he identified this as a 2018 bmw x6 now I've made the case that this is actually a 2022 BMW X6, but I can see the differences in the vehicle that would make somebody assume it was that earlier year model. Because when you put a 2022 next to the vehicle in the picture, you can see that that more pronounced fin behind the right front wheel doesn't match up to the 2022 model of the BMW X6 unless you do this. You would have to compare it to the exclusive 2022 X6 Model M, which is 600 horsepower and very hard to find. But you can see the much more pronounced wheel fin behind the right wheel that matches perfectly to the X6 shown in the video. But why would I go to this exclusive Model M? Because here is the VIN number from the BMW X6 2022 model that was confiscated during the arrest of the 28-member Aryan family who was taken down later in December and January of 2023. And when you look at this VIN number, 
there are five letters that determine the style and model of this vehicle. You'll see those right here. The O in front of the first C represents the exclusive model M. Here you can see we have a list of all of the Aryan family members that were taken down in December of 2022 and January of 2023. Now let me show you how you reduce a list of perpetrators in a case. You'll see I've got a couple of them circled. You got Mr. Eric Smith, 52, and Yoshua Clip, Kilp, 37. And you'll notice they're both incarcerated in the Washington State Prison. So I would assume these are the shot callers in the prison that were directing this organization because they're already in prison. But you can see over here, and I've put 2024 for some reason again, it should be 2022. But you'll notice in red, I've got it 12 14 2022, it should be in Pierce County. That's all red. That shows the perpetrators that were arrested in Pierce County on December 14th. And you'll see I've got red lines along with red underlines going to those individuals. We've got Jesse James Bailey, Thomas Carver, and then down here we've got an odd one, Michael Slocum of Arizona. And then over here you got William Tripp, Anthony Escoto, and Anna Sarns. Okay, those are all the ones taken down December 14th in Pierce County. And then on December 9th, five days prior to that, in Mason County, you'll notice I've got it in blue, and that's what the blue arrows represent. You got Bryson Gill of Arizona, you've got Michael Warren of Washington, and then you've got Michael Slocum of Arizona and Isaac Cervantes of Arizona. Now you'll notice as we're whittling this list down, everybody on this list except for Isaac Cervantes, Michael Slocum, and Bryson Gill are all in Washington. They all live in Washington. Those are the only three that reside in Arizona. Now you'll see I've got Michael Slocum underlined twice in blue and in red. That's because he was not only indicted in Mason County, he was also indicted on the same day in Pierce, or excuse me, five days later in Pierce County which that is an oddity in this. He's the only one that shows up in, you know, two different uh, indictments. And he was actually indicted in Pierce County on the same day, 12-9, not 12-14. So he's doubling on the counties on the same day. So I don't know how you're indicted for different crimes on the same day in two different counties. Again, that one is an oddity. Now, Michael Warren over here, who was with Michael Slocum, Isaac Cervantes, and Bryson Gill during their uh, indictment on 12-9 in Mason County. But you see, he's the only one whose age just seems a little too high to be involved in the actual crime itself. He's 63. The other three are 44, 24, and 30. So you want to know how we whittle down a list of potential perpetrators? Well, that's the first step in it, okay? But I'm going to show you another step. Okay, so here's the December 9th, 2022 indictment in Mason County of Bryson Gill, Michael Slocum, Michael Warren, and Isaac Cervantes. Again, Michael Warren is the only one that's not from Arizona and he's the only one whose age doesn't fit the, um, the uh, perpetrator profile, he's 63. We've got, on December 14th, in Pierce County, we got Thomas Carver, Anthony Escoto, and William Tripp, along with, December 14th in Pierce County, same day, Jesse James Bailey, Thomas Carver, and Anna Sarns. Okay, now what's strange about all of these arrests is this one right here, the Gill, Slocum, Warren, and Cervantes, because in their possession was a 2022 BMW X6 Model M. That was confiscated by law enforcement. So 
Now we've got a little bit of hard evidence that actually ties these four to the King Road area. And they were taken down December 9th. You know, that's what? Uh, let's see, that'd be 26 days after the atrocity. So that starts to tie in some things with this that we can start not denying. But then we've got this other resource that's available to us. You see this, folks? This is produced by the federal government, and it's for statistics. Now, one thing they won't do in this is put the actual indicted person's name or their case number, but they give you every other piece of information, so it's not hard to figure out. I've found the cases for all of those perpetrators that have been indicted on December 14th. This is one of them. And you'll, you can see this uh, code right here is, um, uh, what does that say, 8071, I think. My eyes are not, oh, 6801, I'm sorry. Um, 6801, that is for possession, delivery, and um, basically trafficking a controlled substance. And then you go down here and you got 7830, that is a possession of uh, firearms because a lot of firearms were were confiscated during this uh, big takedown. And 7820, that is a unlawful possession of a firearm, which means a firearm in possession of somebody with a prior felony. But when we go up here to this indictment, you can see this one was on 1214. Obviously, one of the one of the perps taken down on the 14th, and there's nothing else weird about these dates. So his um, fugitive end date was actually, you know, May 10th of 2023. So there's nothing, nothing odd. But then we go to this one right here. Oops. This one right here. This one's different. And you can see it was also taken down on the 14th. And this one has a different fugitive start date, though. And I want you to notice it right here. It's November 22nd, 2022. So that tells me that this individual right here is one of those that was taken down on December 14th, but he was actually initially arrested on November 22nd, 2022, which reminds me of somebody else that was arrested in Washington on November 22nd, 2022, and that was our guy TF, who was arrested up in Spokane on November 22nd, 2022. See, folks, this perpetrator right here was arrested with TF up in Spokane, in my humble opinion. So I've got to figure out who owns this record. Oh, and by the way, this individual... He had a furtherance of violence charge along with his possession of a weapons charge, trafficking charge, and unlawful possession of a firearms charge. So that means when they took him down, he actually brandished a weapon more than likely during the arrest. So that arrest with TF up in Spokane, it may have been a doozy. And I would sure like to get the information on that one because it would sure tell us a lot. However, all we have to do now is go back to this list right here. And we're looking for the people who were indicted on 12-14-24 in Pierce County, just like that individual. And we can then determine well, we can eliminate or reduce the list of who that was that was arrested with TF. It was either Jesse James Bailey, Thomas Carver, Anna Sarns, Anthony es es Escoto, or William Tripp, because those are the ones that were indicted on December 14th in Pierce County. So it's one of these five. So if I could get the arrest record of TF in Spokane on November 22nd, all we have to do is compare who was with him with one of these five, and this case is solved. 
So folks, you know I've got more than that, and I'm further along in this thing than that, but there are still a few pieces of the puzzle that I do not have. For example, that little arrest up in Spokane, Washington on November 22nd, if I had the information on that arrest, that would give me the name of the person that was arrested with an individual where then I could put the final pieces of this puzzle together. Don't quite have that one yet. That one is really hidden. So, I mean, if other people wanted to actually be, actually have some merit and actually do some good with their skills and ability and their connections, you know, helping to uncover something like that would be a major factor in this case rather than demean and discuss, uh, just make themselves look bad. I, 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 I hate it for them because you know what? I, I appreciate everybody out there. Um, I'm not the enemy in this case. I am trying to shed a light on what actually happened. But regardless, I got much more to share with you in the upcoming days, weeks, and months. But until then, please like and uh, subscribe to this channel. Post your comments and uh, post your thoughts. Post those criticisms. Make a video telling your criticisms. That's fine with me. I am no longer going to engage with um, other content creators who come at me negatively. I have a little fun with some of them sometimes, but it doesn't really bother me, folks. These people, these folks, uh, anyway, uh, until next time, let's do this. Until next time, Pavarotti's out.